Today in part two of our trip to the Raymond Alf Museum of Paleontology, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into the Parasaurophilus. We're gonna see what did they get right, what did they get wrong, and just what is this dinosaur that nobody can pronounce? So because I have so much trouble pronouncing this dinosaur's name, I brought in an expert in the field of dinosaurs. Her name is Lucy Herrera, and she is, what would you say you're a? I'm a paleontologist and a collections assistant here at the Alpha Museum. I don't know what that means, but she knows how to pronounce this dinosaur. How do you pronounce this dinosaur's name? Because my viewers, they always grill me and like, you can't pronounce any of these dinosaurs right, and this is one that I constantly butcher. So how do you say Parasaurophilus? Okay, it's Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus? Mm -hmm. Parasaurolophus. See, I never would have gotten that right. So have you played the game Jurassic World Alive at all? I haven't actually. What? All right, we, <laughs> we can't do this. If she's never even played the game, we can't. No, I'm just teasing her. So here is what the game considers. Here, you can hold this. A para Sauralophus? Yep, that's it. I'm never gonna get that. I'm sorry guys, I'm never gonna get that right. So, is that what you picture one to look like if you were to see one in, in the wild? Definitely. This is, I would say, a pretty great representation of at least what we believe Parasaurolophus looked like in its adult stage. So, why the red on top of the head there? So, one of the things is that Paleontologists don't have a good way of understanding what colors dinosaurs were. So this is one interpretation and we don't have any scientific evidence to suggest that it's correct or not correct. One uh, interpretation could be that the red uh, was kind of a marker to signal to other animals. So um, it's a plausible hypothesis of what this animal actually looked like. In the game Jurassic World Alive, there are four different habitat zones that don't really apply to anything in life other than the game. So this is a daytime only habitat zone three spawn. Is there anything to suggest a reason why this would be a daytime only spawn in the game? Was there something about the build, the genetic makeup, or anything that makes people think that it's a daytime only, that it flourished during the day and slept at night? Definitely, so we know that hadrosaurs uh, the family that Parasaurolophus belongs to are herbivores. We can look at their teeth and see that they had very flat, broad teeth that they used um, to chew up a lot of different plants. And we see other grazers, large mammals like elephants, they're definitely more active during the daytime and uh, less active at night. So um, based on that, it would be a good hypothesis that uh, hadrosaurs and Parasaurolophus were more active in the daytime and not so much at night. Sounds like maybe they're getting stuff right in this game. Now one other question about the game, and then we'll get into to Baby Joe, which you actually had a, had a hand in finding, correct? Correct. It's a fast dinosaur in the game. Is there something to suggest that this would be a fast dinosaur? Um, I'm not too sure about the biomechanics of Parasaurolophus specifically, uh, at least in terms of its pace or gait. I do know that it was a rather large creature and uh, at its longest could be up to about 30 feet. Uh, and that obviously size will uh, have an impact on how fast an animal can move. It probably wasn't a super fast animal but I'm sure that you know especially in times when it was being hunted uh, they were able to sprint in some spurts. 
So it, it, it kind of fits in there because it's it's 132 is the fastest dinosaur in the game and this one's 128 so it's, it's not the slowest like a T-Rex or an Allosaurus which we talked about in a previous video but it, it, it's in the range there. So like I mentioned Lucy was a student here at the school and she was part of the discovery team that found baby Joe which is a and I'm gonna mess this up and I'm sorry Lucy, like it, it, <laughs> how, how many years have you been doing this so that you get the pronunciation correct? Um, probably since about 2007. Yeah. So she has like 11 years of practicing this name. I have like 11 days. So Parasaurolophus. Got it. I got it. Perfect. This is a baby Parasaurolophus. She went to school here, did an excavation with the with the, the high school, right? And so she's going to tell you a little bit about what what is special about this. It's the only... It's it, the most complete baby Parasaurolophus known in the world. That sounds pretty important to me. This is a really awesome specimen that we have at the Alp Museum. Probably one of the most important specimens that we've ever discovered. Uh, so this is a baby Parasaurolophus named Baby Joe. And what is so cool about Baby Joe is that he is the most complete baby dinosaur found from the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. And so we were able to collect Joe through permits from the Bureau of Land Management. Um, now, what that shows us is how dinosaurs actually change from when they were babies to adults. You know, uh, many animals, including humans, look very different when they are in infant or juvenile stages compared to their adults. But there's just not a lot of babies preserved in the fossil record. That's because uh, they have softer body tissue and uh, there are just not as many of them. So we're, we don't really get to see a lot of baby dinosaurs. But I was actually on a fossil collecting trip where my friend found the toe bone of Baby Joe. And that led us to uncover about 90% of the skeleton. It's just missing one arm and a couple of other parts. From this, we were able to see how uh, Parasaurolophus transformed from just a tiny egg into about a 30-foot dinosaur. Uh, Baby Joe died around one year old. So um, he's a lot smaller than what he would be at, at an adult stage. But you can see this animal probably weighed a couple hundred pounds. So just in the span of a year, he's growing at a pretty exponential rate. Um, and based on the specimen, we were able to take a look at its skull to see um, you know, what kinds of things it was eating, how the crest formed. Because at this stage, um, Parastrolophus doesn't really have that long tube. It just has a little nub at the, at the end. Uh, and one of the really cool things about Parastrolophus is that we believe um, that the crest was used uh, as a form of communication. It was a big hollow tube that sound was probably able to travel through. So uh, other Parastrolophus were able to get in touch with each other and you know warn about danger or um, you know talk to each other about where the best food or water was. But we can see that in Baby baby Joe and other baby Parasaurolophus, that crest is just about a couple inches long. It's not really developed. And so that leads us to learn more about how they were communicating, what they actually looked like, and how they were able to go from that baby stage to the fully fledged adult stage. Uh, and if we didn't find this specimen, we would have never been able to know that. Uh, so that's just a couple of the reasons why this is a really important, amazing specimen that was found here at the Alpha Museum. Again, I just want to say thank you to the Raymond Alf Museum of Paleontology. I had a fantastic time there. Learned a ton. Found out things I didn't know I didn't know. Glad to know that I actually pronounced some dinosaurs right, despite what a lot of you like to tell me that I'm wrong. And I know I get a lot of them wrong, but at least I'm trying. Like I said, go out, visit your museums, take the time this summer when you travel, just stop by. There's a lot of history to be learned in these museums and a lot of things that you probably didn't know you didn't know that you can find out. That's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed this little mini series that I did. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit the bell so that you are alerted to all of future videos. And until next time, guys, have a great weekend.